Good afternoon, gents. Uh, today we're snapper formation. It costs millions to train fighter pilots like these, which is why the RAF needs to know if they have the potential to be top guns long before they ever sit in a plane. So along with traditional training exercises, they have to pass a computer-based exam that tests their ability to multitask even in the most extreme situations. And that's the test I'm about to sit. This is a test of your ability to do three different tasks simultaneously, a memory task, an arithmetic task, and a vigilance task. The vigilance task requires simply zapping little diamonds in the second or two they're hidden by their own color and needs almost no concentration. But as soon as I have to alternate between the tasks, in this case solving simple arithmetic against the clock while remembering seemingly random codes, my ability to multitask is tested to the limit. How well do the aptitude tests that you give predict how good a pilot's going to be? Yes, we have actually run study and they have proved to be very predictive tests of flying training performance all the way from the beginning right all the way to the uh, advanced uh, stage. The diamonds represent the regular monitoring a pilot has to do, like direction, altitude, where's my wingman? The mental arithmetic is at a slightly higher level of cognition. Do I have enough fuel left for another bomb run? Have I primed my weapon system? And finally, being able to accurately recall those lines of code tests the ability to remember important information like call signs and coordinates the split second they're needed. All this has to be done against the clock in an environment that offers no second chances. To make matters worse for the pilots, some studies have shown that when we multitask, our effective brain power drops, which is a bit worrying where I'm sitting. To give you a bit of an idea at the speed of this bad boy, we just travelled at 600 miles per hour. So if you wanted to travel from London to Holyhead, it would take about five hours in a car, but it would take less than half an hour in this baby. Yeah, there's lots of things going through my head at the moment. We just pulled out on top of the clouds, so that makes my life easier. I can now see what's actually happening. I'm speaking to the air traffic control centre down in London. Next thing I'm talking about is just flying nice and accurately, so we're at 10,000 feet, we're at about uh, 350 miles an hour. I've got my buddy out there on my wing, so he's nice and sorted. Unbelievable. I can keep up with one or two things, but after that, I completely lose track of what's going on. And that's not really surprising because we normally think of multitasking as consciously doing more than one thing at the same time. But what's actually going on? The way that people understand multitasking is doing a lot of things at the same time. But in fact, we actually can focus on one task at a time only. Basically, we scan our environment to see what needs to be done and then we prioritise and then we attend to the most important task first, set that into motion, and then attend to the next most important task. So really multitasking is not about doing lots of things exactly at the same time, it's about being able to switch from one to the other. Yes, very much so. Sniper contact short reapproach 282.10. So, the idea that we can consciously do more than one thing at a time is a myth. What we do is constantly jump from one task to another. And according to some scientists, I should have an advantage here. MRI scans have shown that on average, women have a larger corpus callosum, the part of the brain which aids communication between its left and right sides, possibly making women better at multitasking. But Margaret Bailey of the RAF thinks the reason we think women have always been better than men at multitasking is simply down to perception. I think it's start from the stereotype image of women working at home in a traditionally women have to look after the kids, do all the cooking, ironing, you know, lots and lots of tasks. Mm. But now, you know, as you know that men can also do the same. They are men hu house husbands <laughs> yeah. as well. But whatever creates the perfect fighter pilot brain, I just need to know one thing. How did I do in that test? OK, so I'm ready for my test results. Ooh, let's have a look. Oh, put me back oh. at school, Margaret. <laughs> How do you think you have done? I thought I did absolutely rubbish because I made some really schoolboy errors on some of the... Ooh, let's have a look. Ooh. 
here are your results and they show that you are around average. I hate the word average. <laughs> so would you like to come along and apply to be a pilot? Get to in! See how well you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Okay, I'll take average. I'm never a fan of average, but I'll take it. So uh, there's potential. Yes, there is. Really? We just need to see your aptitudes in the other area. Bring it. I'll come back and do all the other tests. Yes, your results. That is the coolest exam result I have ever gotten, I've got to say.